Hello, hello, happy Saturday, everyone. I hope you guys are ready for our coffee date and I hope my phone has enough charge and I hope the connection stays good today because I'm so ready to talk to you guys this morning about a topic that has been on my mind and heart for a few weeks now and when the push came about and I thought to myself, okay, I have an opportunity to really talk about this and all the, the realizations I've come to, um, I was excited. I was excited to bring it to you, but I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit nervous too. So while we wait for people to hop on, how about you give me a couple of hearts if you've got coffee in your hands right now, like I do. You got coffee? Ooh, mine says a bad word. I'm fucking fabulous. That's an incantation right there. Every day I say it to myself. <laughs> so tell me, give me some hearts if you have coffee in your hands. Yeah? All right, now give me thumbs up if you're on the West Coast. It's 7 a.m. and you're still like literally waking up. Is that you? Tell me if that's you. And you know what? Meanwhile, let me plug because I'm a little afraid I may run out of battery. Hey, Anna. She's at basketball practice with the boys, but she's here anyway. I'm excited for that. Keep going, guys. Keep going, guys. Give me hearts if you got coffee. Give me thumbs up if you're in the West Coast. All right, sorry. Meanwhile, let me fix my um my phone so I can have charge meanwhile. That way we don't deal with any disconnections. And guys, if for whatever reason I get disconnected, just jump on the next video. I'll pop right back in and start a new one. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, Christy from New York. Awesome. Amy, Sue. Good morning, good morning. This is what we're doing, guys. As people jump on, if you have coffee in your hand, I want to see hearts. If you're on the West Coast and it's 7 a.m. for you or later, whatever, you're just walk getting out of bed, I want to see thumbs up. Thumbs up telling me that you're, you're here. You're here. You made it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, let's rock and roll, guys. I'm ready for this. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Monica Lopez. I've been a coach for five years now, okay? I started, um, may, some of you may or may not know, but I was introduced to Beachbody and Shakeology in my first program uh, by Christina Delgado. She was actually my boss at the law firm that we worked at here in um, Brickell. And I'll tell you what, guys, like I think about this all the time, what led me like exactly here, just like I posted in the group, what led me right here to what I'm doing. And, and there's a lot of things in my life. Um, but first and foremost, I am a wife. You know, my, my most prestigious titles are that I'm a wife and mother of three. I have Jason, who's turning 10 in a couple of days. All my kids' birthdays are a week apart. So Jason's about to turn 10, Jackson's about to turn six, and Mia's turning four years old. She's like four going on 14, but nonetheless, she's turning four years old. And, um, and I think about it all the time, like what landed me here and what made me say yes to Christina and what made me take each milestone in this business seriously and, and what made me recognize the incredible opportunity we have as Beachbody coaches. So I'll share a little bit about what I shared yesterday and go into depth on a couple of things. First and foremost, I grew up overweight, um, a good chunk of my childhood, I think around the age of six six or so, six or seven, uh, I started to put on weight. And my sister was always the thinner one. And I wasn't very active. And I love food. I still love food. So it was catching up to me as a child. And I went through a lot of rough years in school getting bullied and teased for that. Not just that, but I also had really bad teeth. Thank God my mom um, got braces for us. But we had really horrible teeth, my sister and I. And, you know, kids are cruel. Kids are cruel. Um, I got teased a lot. I got bullied a lot. And my self-esteem self suffered a lot for it. It's crazy because as adults, we look back and we're like, well, obviously we know better. We know better. It was just a rough couple years. No big deal. But there's still those things that were said and done to you that never leave you. They never leave you. And I've always been a person, I recognize that for a long time I've been a person that when one person thinks bad about me or one person, um, like I know, even if, if they're not somebody very, you know, significant in my life, but because um, someone doesn't approve of me or thinks well of me, um, it bothers me. 
I'm, gonna be, I'm being really real and raw with you guys. It affects me, okay? And I think it comes, it, it, it stems from my childhood on wanting to be accepted. But fast forward, I could tell you that the, around the age of 13 or 14, um, it's actually in the middle school time where you could pick the elective of dance or weight training. I actually picked weight training just not to be in a leotard because I actually got, um, out of all the girls that tried out for dance team, uh, I did not get picked and I remember being at that dance uh, audition and running home afterwards crying to my mom like I jumped they, like ran into the door crying like a maniac and she was like what happened to you and I had had such a bad audition and I found out that I did not make the team um, and a lot of it has to do with again being teased and stuff like that in, in you know the leotard and being told that was fat and this all that so I had chosen weight training okay with all the guys in a like a stinky gym just to get away from that atmosphere of the girls and being self-conscious and it was actually a turning point for me because being in that um classroom with guys learning how to weight train um it gave me back control of myself i learned how to work out at a very young age how to make my body do what i wanted it to do at a very young age and it gave me control and I felt amazing like I remember feeling so empowered as a teenager and so that you know that's a lot of what I carry today in what I do as a beach body coach I like to tell like oh lost you for a second okay I tell my mentor all the time I'm like one of my biggest things like what you know what we've come up with is bottom line I like to help people take back control in so many areas of their life, right? And in this case, it was fitness for me. Fast forward to when I started having kids, um, I had my first son very young. I got pregnant at 20, um, he, I gave birth to him. Literally, I turned 21 in July and he was born in September. Uh, so I didn't have much time to enjoy being a, a young woman, you know, a, 20, a fresh 20, 21 year old. Um, and here I was with a baby. And not just that, but when I got pregnant, I think, forget eating for two, I ate for like 20 a day. And I gained a lot of weight. I gained almost 80 pounds in my first pregnancy and that wreaked havoc on my body. I was like 115 pounds going into that pregnancy and I nearly reached 200 pounds and my skin just gave out in, 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 in certain areas and my tummy was the worst. And I suffer from an ab separation that makes my stomach look just extra flabbier <laughs> with excess skin that I can't really do anything about. I can work out so I'm blue in the face, but those flaws will always remain unless I go get surgery, which I have chosen not to. And so I'm telling you this because it was the first time since being a teenager that I suffered with what I look like. I was self-conscious all over again. And I was angry. I was angry because I was like, this is not fair. I'm 21 years old. All my friends are out clubbing and having a good time and on their bikinis and the beach and and here I am like I'm destroyed that's what I felt like I felt destroyed and you know it, it was something that forget it I mean like I said working with me okay um, I felt destroyed and it was the first time again like those things as a child start to come back to you it's an icky feeling so insert meeting Christina Delgado. Um, you know, you guys know that Becky basically, you know, made her buy Shakeology and become a coach so that Becky could advance to Emerald. And then in turn, you know, when Christy started getting amazing results and she had DJ and she bounced back and everything was going awesome, you know, here I had her in front of me and I remember her telling me, drink Shakeology, do the workouts, like do it right. I was using Bird DVDs, doing it half-assed. Um, and, you know, it was her, after me and after me. I mean, guys, she was behind me all the time. When are you gonna join my team? When are you gonna join my team? When are you gonna start? When are you gonna start? And I didn't even understand what she was trying to say to me. Like, I'm like, what team are you talking about, lady? You know, and she was my boss at the time. So I finally took her up on it. She finally convinced me enough to, to trust. Um, and here I am five years later, drinking Shakeology, getting my workouts, feeling better than ever. And the tummy tuck that I once wanted so bad, and I actually started my beach body business to save up for, my, for a tummy tuck, I no longer need, like I no longer care about. I know, like I am so proud of what I look like and it ain't perfect, but I'm proud of it. 
I don't suffer anymore. I know that I have the tools. If I want to like look extra great for a vacation or, you know, or an event or anything, like I know what to do. I know how to buckle down. I'm in control. I'm in control of it. If I want to loosen up and have a great summer and not worry about it, but feel, you know, just good enough in my bikini, I know how to do that too. So it's taking back control. Now, how did I go into this business full time? How did I land here where they, this is literally my world, my, my, my job? Again, they're turning points like I talked about. I Let me give you a little bit of background. My mother is a multiple business owner. I've seen entrepreneurship as from, from a very young age. My mom had me at 17, okay? And all my life I've seen, my and my sister's on here too, she could probably uh, fend for this also, but we've seen my mom hustle all our lives. All our lives. And I remember her at a young age, I think it was about 25 years old. Now I think back and I realize, damn, that was amazing. went into her first, her first own business. She was working as a bartender, uh, as a waitress, uh, I mean, doing all these things, like three jobs at a time, I remember at one point. And we were being raised you know, by a nanny because my mom was a hustler. And she would go out there and she finally decided, you know what, like I'm gonna build this business. And she chose preschools because she wanted to do a business where it could incorporate her children. You know, and so we always thought about like I always re remember that, and my mom did that at a very young age of 25. And so I come from that. That's what I've seen all my life. It's never been easy. My mom never bought us cars when she could afford to buy us cars. She made us save for it. My mom didn't buy us like the best of the best clothes or sneakers and all that. We had to earn it or wait for our birthday or wait for Christmas. There are a lot of things that my mom did that created my sister and I how we are today, and. Pfft, Lo and behold, we're thriving in this business as entrepreneurs. So that's another aspect of my life. But here's the deal. I didn't know I wanted to be an entrepreneur. For a long time, I had this idea stuck in my head that I wanted to be a lawyer. So bad. So bad. And I think society does that a lot of times where doctors, lawyers, like right, these big professions, um, like that's the top of the mountain. And you think that that's everything. And so in my head, being a lawyer was everything. And... I graduated very young, I graduated at 17. I went to college, got my degree, my BS in journalism, and I had what was like laser focused on being an attorney. I took the LSATs and everything at eight months pregnant with Jason, um, and I went through all that, but by the time he was born, and by the time I had him in my arms, and I was, and I was actually like my mom, I was working as a bartender at night, as a receptionist and file clerk in the morning, and I was going to school three, four nights a week, an hour and a half away from our house. And I had this little infant that my mother-in-law and my husband pretty much for the first six months raised because I was out of the house hustling. And that was like a turning point for me. That was a big turning point for me because that's when I realized, you know what, I'm, I'm missing out. I came home one day and Jason did not, see, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get emotional. I remember coming home and him not wanting to come to my arms and only going to my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law and my husband's arms. But he threw himself away from me, right? So that was a turning point for me where I was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be that mom. Like I want to be here. I want him to know me and all my dreams of being an attorney and everything. Like I just threw it out the window. I threw it out the window and I went back to my job at, at that time. Sorry guys. Ooh. God, this team makes you a crybaby. Okay, so I went back and I was like, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep working in the law firm that I was at. At the time, I was a part-time file clerk and receptionist. And I'm like, I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to be like those other chicks. Because I looked up to the paralegals and the secretaries in the office. And I'm like, I'm going to be like them. Like, they make great money. You know, they have good hours, um, they're smart, and I can do that still. And so that's what I did, guys. That's what I did. I just buckled down. I worked really hard. I was the youngest um, legal secretary for a long time. And then I got the job over at the firm where Christina and I worked at. Making probably money that most 25-year-olds at that time were not making in their lives. You know, I know a lot of friends that were still living at their mom's house. <laughs> but it always hung over my head that I never became an attorney like I never went all the way you know and so 
I think about like insert beach body and going full time into this business. And when Mia was born with her condition and it pushed me, I feel like God redirected me once again with another, you know, like where your mess turns into your message type deal. Like he redirected me all over again to tell me like, this is where you belong. This is where you belong. Like this is your thing, right? This is your answer. This is your solution. Like take it seriously. It could change everything for you. And so that's how I'm here today. That's how I'm here today. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. This business is tough, but I choose this hard over any other hard out there. I'm telling you, we have it all here. And you know, so what I, let me, let me tell you guys what I want to talk to you about today. What I want to talk to you about today is the objections, the naysayers, the people that may ridicule us, the people that may block or delete us on social media, the people that may, um, you know, just look down on what you're doing or don't see what you see or don't understand. I want to talk to you about that today because I faced a lot of that. And I realized, I've realized in the last five years, although you may be hearing my story and all you hear is strength. The truth of the matter is that there's been a lot of weakness because I've listened to a lot of people around me. I listened to a lot of people around me and, and unfortunately a lot that were very close to me, which probably hurts more, right? That didn't complete, that were not completely on board. Okay. Or didn't support me fully or made me feel bad for this decision that I took you know, and, and, and the things that I'm doing. And so I want to talk about that because I'll, t I'll tell you, there's a lot of reasons why this has been on my heart. When we were at summit, I went to break, I'm um, sorry, lunch with Arlene Pino and her team. She invited me. She's like, listen, my team really wants to get to know you. I'd love to, for you to, you know, I want to treat you to lunch so that you can talk to them. So I meet them up for lunch and I'm talking to these amazing ladies. And then Arlene starts to go into all the things that a lot of teachers were doing to her in her school. And I'm like, I just sat back and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe day to day she was living with people doing this to her. Like it was so ugly, the things that were said to her. And I'm like, and I've had those same stories and I've been bottling up and Arlene was bottling it up. And I was like, no, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. I want you to know right, right now, if you're on this call and you've dealt with someone like that in your life, give me hearts. Tell me that you feel me right now when, you, when I'm saying that you've had somebody in your life that made you feel bad about your decision to go into this business all the way. Oh, I love those hearts, you see? So I want you to know that you're not alone because a lot of times I felt alone. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Am I doing something wrong? Am I not coming off right that people are not happy for me? That they're not happy. That they can't see how amazing this has been for me and my family. Why are they not? They must not love me if they're not happy for me. Right? Well, it's screw them. And that's the attitude I took a lot of times. If you're on the, the, the webinar that we did or if you're on my team, Diesel Core, you know that I have GoPro. Like, I've been reading GoPro, like, for the fourth time. But I haven't read it in, like, two years. And it's given me so many ahas. I've been reading GoPro and I'm going to reference it again. I hope you guys pick it back up after this call. But GoPro talks about, Eric Ori talks about the stigma of network marketing. Like pretty much he goes through every type of business out there. Entrepreneurship, white collar, blue collar. Um, and yeah, building, you know, entrepreneurship, building your own business. I can't think of the other one. Sales, okay. But then there's network marketing. He talks about all the flaws in all the ways of business that we know today, right? And then he talks about network marketing. And he talks about network marketing pretty much being almost flawless. But the biggest flaw that network marketing has is that we have posers come into this kind of business that just want a quick buck, that just don't want to put in work, that they look at it from the outside and they don't realize that it's, it's disguised as work. It is work at the end of the day. People that take it um, seriously, it is your ability to be a business owner. It's a tremendous opportunity that anybody, I mean, you don't need a degree. You don't need any kind of knowledge. You don't need anything to go into network marketing. So what happens is that we have a bunch of posers that do come in and think that they can do this without doing anything. And then when they quickly realize that's not the case, they exit out of the business and talk a lot of shit. That's the bottom line, right? That's the flaw of network marketing. When you have posers come in and they get out there. And so that's what we face. The biggest 
thing we face is people not understanding what we do as network marketers. And so today, that's what I want to touch upon because all those naysayers, all those people out there looking down at you, all those people are not understanding, all those people think that you're crazy or blocking you or deleting you or you're annoying or you're whatever, it comes from two things I've realized. Five years of my time, two years is it comes down to fear or just simply ignorance, not knowing. And I'm not saying that to be in a mean way. It, they just don't know any better. They have probably been exposed to some kind of poser out there that didn't do it the right way and is giving us a name as if we are not something true. And we are. So I thought about how am I going to deliver this message? How am I going to get you guys to see what I have realized? Because we can do something about this. There's And Eric Worre goes into this and he talks about how you can be an amateur and then you know, go full blown being a pro, a professional, right? Go pro. That's the whole point of the book. And I think as leaders of Diesel Nation, all of you guys that are on here, I think we're far past posers. Nobody here is a poser. I know that. But I think Marley just said no bad words. Sorry, Marley. Um, okay. I think that um, probably the majority of us are still amateurs. I'm still an amateur, I realized. Okay, after reading this book again, I have not gone completely pro yet. And I, I, I'm, I've been thinking about how am I going to deliver this message to you guys. And I thought about that movie, He's Just Not That Into You. Have you guys heard, seen that movie? Give me hearts if you've seen the movie, He's Just Not That Into You. It's about a girl that goes out on all these dates, right? And she does it like all wrong. She does it all wrong. She goes out on these dates. She's like, pathetically desperate. She wants your phone number right away. She wants to make sure you're gonna call her. She's like operating on this thing. Like, I just want someone to like want me, you know? And it come, it oozes out of her and she scares off every guy. The funny thing is, is that when she turns around and goes to her friends and says, can you believe he hasn't called me? Can you believe he hasn't asked me on a date yet? Can you believe this and that? Her friends sit back and say, girl, that's his loss. He's, he's just not into it. Like, like, I'm sorry. He, that's your loss. Oh, screw him. Oh, you're so beautiful. Any man would want you. You're everything. Fuck him, you know? Like, and that's what we do to make ourselves feel better when in reality, we all know that our friend's a little cuckoo and she needs to calm the F down and just be herself and let someone fall in love with her, right? Okay. I'm going to put this into our business. Oftentimes, people block, delete, make fun of us, naysayers, objections, all these kinds of things that we hear. And sometimes I see that a lot of us present it to the team, right? Or to the leadership in Diesel, Diesel Nation Diamond Group. And what comes out of everybody's mouth is, screw them, you'll show them, D don't worry, you're in the right place. And we just bash, bash, bash. And, and I want to switch that mindset because we're all operating as amateurs. And the right way to do it is to go pro and understand that we have a job, actually. That's part of our job. I'm not saying this is going to go for everyone because there's some a-holes out there that just deserve for you to just walk away because they're just never going to get it. And actually, they probably find um, happiness in, in, in putting you down. But there are some people, and I know there are some people in my life that I could have done it differently that would have created a more positive outcome, okay? And it's gonna happen with, you know, coworkers that you have around you, family, friends, and stuff like that, where instead of telling our friends, you're beautiful, this is it, be like, hey, look, he's just not into you. Move on, find the guy that is into you, just be you. Well, I'm gonna tell you guys, as coaches and as friends, it's not that they, they suck, it's that they're just scared or they don't know enough. So let's make it our job to ease that fear and educate them, just like Eric Worre says in GoPro. That's part of going pro. Amateurs just get a no, and they walk away, and they say, well, forget it. That person doesn't see it. They don't get it, and you move on. Instead of stopping with absolutely no expectation from this person and say to them, well, tell me why you feel that way. Like, what's happened? And probably they've, they've been burned some way. Some poser has been around in their life. Or they may tell you like, oh, I don't know. Like, it seems like, you know, I don't know. Whatever, whatever their objection is. Like, oh, I think that's not real. Like, those results are not real. And then you say, but you know, 
and you start telling a story about like I see it's real because XYZ I've been around I've seen this I've I've experienced this like I can show you a different way I understand what you're feeling like I once was a skeptic like I really was a skeptic about MLMs myself myself I was a skeptic um so I, I'm like, Monica, re revert back to who you were at one point and like attack it that way, you know? But take the time to do that and do it with absolutely no expectation. Not that you're gonna walk away from that conversation and you sold a challenge pack, no. Or you sign your next coach, no. But you're changing one person more's mindset and, and belief in what you do. And even if they don't join you, guess what? You're gonna have one more person in your corner that's gonna be happy for you, that's gonna see your passion, that's gonna see that you really truly care. It's not just a sale. You really care enough to stop and say, well, why do you feel that way? Like, I wanna know because you know what? I really think I can help you. I really have something great here. And, 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 and take that opportunity to leverage what you've done. So, couple things. I already, I already touched on GoPro, how he talks about facing the stigma, the stigma of network marketing, and ed going out and educating, that is part of our job. But second, it's so funny that Kara is there saying, yes, erase their fears, educate them. Because Kara doesn't know this, Kara Canizaro does not know this, but she's been a person that I've sat back and watched and realized Karen goes pro when it comes to this. Here's how I know this. One time in Diesel Nation Wall, which is the five stars and above, you know, it's kind of like my little, um, home like my safe zone where sometimes I share things that I'm ashamed about or whatever or I'm just sharing struggles and one time I shared about a person that I've been talking to that's been taking up a lot of my time asking a lot of questions and when it boils down to they were like uh I can't afford this I'm sorry my husband says that we can't afford it but we'd like to know if you want to go out for some drinks we think that you and your husband are really fun people that's what I was told. So I was like, this is ridiculous. The girl at one point is saying that she can't afford a challenge pack. And on the other end, she's telling me, let's go out for drinks. <laughs> I was like, so I posted it in the Nation wall. But Kara came. Kara's like, well, think about it this way. Maybe, if her, pers maybe her personality is a type yellow. Just make it fun for her. Maybe you could go and tell her that once she finishes a three week challenge and feels amazing, you will buy her drinks. So that way the money she was gonna stay, you know, spend on drinks, she can spend on her challenge back and then you will reward her with a night out, you know, a double date. That stuck with me. And I was like, I gotta start seeing things differently, you know? And I've watched Kara do this in other instances. I've seen her do it more than once. But here's a real turning point where I realized what Kara is about. I don't know if you guys read, but her husband, Frank, when she got her uh, portrait, which guys, these things are like amazing. Like that was worth everything I've ever done in five years. Like it's, it's all right here, it's so awesome. But when Frank went public with how he perceived this business in the beginning and all the hardship he put Kara through and all the, I mean, the ways that he would he, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm stating facts because he wrote this. He would ridicule her. He was a naysayer. He would give her objections. He, he would do these things as she was walking out of team calls, happy. He would knock her down and say like, what are you doing? He didn't get it. Where did it come from? It was fear. He wasn't sure if she was making the right decision for their family. Like to him, she's a lawyer. Like she's throwing away everything she's worked so hard for. He was afraid. And he was also slightly uneducated on exactly what she was doing. He didn't get it. He didn't see it. But he admitted in this post that now he sees it. He gets it. And he's on board 1,000% with her. And it made me think like if Kara can go to bed every night with her number one naysayer, with the number one person that she loves in her life, right? It's her husband. But she can stand tall and have such belief and such conviction for her family and see the bigger picture for them, even when her own husband couldn't, why can't we? Like that was a big realization to me. And so I wanna like brand the hashtag, be like Kara. Every time you feel like, screw them, screw that, la, 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 be like Kara. Take a step back because I'm sure she may have told Frank where to go fly a kite once or twice. We love you, Frank Tank, by the way. She may have, but she still, she still remained true to, 
to, um, you know, her vision and knowing that this was going to be the right thing for their kids and for them in the long run. So I always think of Kara and I wanted to drop that note to you guys. Be like Kara when those things happen to you. So GoPro made me change my mind. Kara made me change my mind. And then some personal struggles that I want to share with you about. When I go to family events, you know, back when I first started, I would walk into like, I remember like holidays and stuff and, and especially my in-laws, they would yell out Shakeology and they would like make fun of me. They'd be like, oh, come here. Let me see your muscles. And I knew that they were making fun of me silently, you know, um, and telling me like every time I would pick up a piece of food, like, oh, are you a fake coach? Are, are you allowed to eat pastelitos? I'm like, yes, I can eat pastelitos because I burn it off and I work out and I drink Shakeology every day and I eat the damn pastelitos. <laughs> You know, I would get those things from people around me. I would get friends who would say like, oh, you're too busy for me. Like I would get a lot of those things because the reality is, is that the internet trolls or all the other people, they don't really bother you that much. The ones that bother the most are people that are closest to you. I would get all those things and I would act like I didn't care, but I'm being real and raw with you right now. I know it dented me each and every time. Each and every time I acted like I didn't care, it really dented me. It dented my vision and dented my belief and I allowed it to waste time that I had, okay? Because later on that turned into like when I even, I mean, it, this, this thing has, this business has been like this for me. It's been like up and down. It's been such a struggle, an emotional struggle, okay? It's not been easy. And those dips always came, I, like, I sat back and looked, I'm like, when did the dips come? It's when I let those people come into my head, like, screw with my mind power. If you're less brown, oh, all my PD is coming out today. If you listen to Les Brown, thanks to Becky Brasse, I would listen to Les Brown all the time. Like, you can't let things mess with your mind power. And I was letting those people take over my mind power. And it dented me you know, along the way. And, and, and I still found my way, right? Five years later, I'm still finding my way. I mean, I remember when I quit my job, my mother-in-law being really upset with us, saying that I was making the biggest mistake and I was being selfish, that all I wanted to do was work out all day, you know? Um, and I'm sure it came out of fear because we help her out a lot financially. So she's like, shit, if this doesn't go down well, I'm screwed too, you know? Um, but it was, it was fear, but I, you know, that dented me a little bit. My vision, my belief, was I doing the right thing? Like, do you think about those things sometimes? Where you, are, am I doing the right thing? Like, is this the right thing for me? I wanna tell you guys that you're just wasting time. Don't let anybody screw with your mind power. And even today, that I found my way after five years, even in those dips and highs and lows and all that kind of stuff, now, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten some sort of success. I mean, there's way more, believe me, there's way more that I need to achieve, that I want to achieve. But I've had a taste of success in, in, in some way, right? But now I have those naysayers telling me, oh, that I think I'm a celebrity or, or that I think I'm, I'm too good for them. You know, it's funny how that switches, right? But I'm going to face it differently. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to let them into my head. I'm not going to let them screw. I'm not going to say the F word because Marley's listening. But I'm not going to let them with my mind power. Okay, because that is all mine. That's that is my power. That is what drives my business. And each and every time that I let it in, all I'm doing is screwing with my business and my family. Because this business provides for us. This business gives us things that, you know, the dreams that I want for my kids. It gives them mommy at home. It gives them um, us the freedom to do it, what we want on our terms. It gives us like, you know, all these other things that like, the home that we have. I mean, I could go on and on. I can go on and on about how the, 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 the trips, oh, we never got to go on vacations before. And we go on vacation galore now. Like there's so many things that this business has done for my family. And each and every time that I let something pet again, it's screwing with my mind power. So what are we going to do about it? Well, I want to urge you guys today to change your mindset. Change your mindset. Think about that movie that I told you about. Instead of being the friend that's saying, screw them, da, 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 no, change it around. Be like, how can I educate the next person? How? And, 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 and here's the secret. It's not even about them. It's not about convincing them. It's for your own sake. Because you're gonna feel better about yourself, the fact that you took the time to listen to somebody and give them feedback that you 
you didn't just walk away with all these this crap in your head, right? All this fog in your head off of another objection or another naysayer. You're walking away feeling like, you know what? I think I made a difference. I think I made a difference. Even and no expectation. Like I said, you're not you're not looking for it to be your next coach, your next challenge pack, or you know, sale or anything like that. Just one more person that understands you. That understands your passion. And they may never join you, but at the end of the day, when you are winning, because each and every single one of you, I know it, are gonna be winning. Are already winning. They're gonna be happy for you. And you're gonna have people that are happy for you, and there's nothing better than that, than succeeding and people being happy for you, okay? And again, I will take this back a little bit. There's some people that you're just never gonna be able to change and they're never gonna come around and that's completely cool and you bless and release those people but I know I could be true to myself and know that I could have done things a little bit differently in certain situations and I'm sure that you can too today, okay? For the people that really mean to you. And I'm gonna leave you guys with one last little story. The reason why this all came full circle for me is because last week I use an app called Followers on my phone, just a, a way to track who I reached out to on Instagram, you know, who I followed and who I made a connection with and followed me back. That app is a little tricky because it tells you also who deletes you, who stops following you, who blocked you, right? And that can be a little painful sometimes, which is what we've been talking about. And usually I go through the list and I'm like, ah, okay, 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 it is what it is. But there was one person last week that deleted me. That it was a pain point. It was a pain point. It was somebody that's been in my life for lots of years. A very good friend. And my initial reaction was like, I was hurt. I was like, what do you mean? Like, what did I do? What have I, I haven't done anything less or more than the last five years, you know? Um, and, and again, those thoughts, like why? Isn't this person happy for me? Oh, I keep losing connection. Okay, I'm back. Why isn't this person happy for me? But here's what I did differently. I got on the phone. I called this person up. And I was like, hey, how are you? How are you doing? How's life? And I said, listen, I want to talk to you about something. I just want to make sure, like, I didn't do anything to, like, upset you. Or, to, like, just, I just want to make sure. Because... I did, you know, and I explained, I have this app, it shows me this, and you know, and, and people come and go, and that's completely cool, it's my business, it's the way I run my business, but you, I love you, I really love you, and I wanna make sure that it wasn't something I did, that it was just that you're kind of annoyed with my workouts and this and that, because I know I could get annoyed, you know, I get it, my passion, I love it, like I love it, but I can understand that you're annoyed by it, it's cool, but I wanna make sure that that's what it is, and not that you're upset with me in any kind of way. And when I did that, this person was like, oh my God, I mean, obviously trying to be nice. Oh my God, no, did I do that? I didn't mean to, oh, I think you're amazing. I've been watching you, you know, I'm so proud of you. I know I haven't told it to you, but what you're doing is really admirable. And, and this person went on and on and on to tell me how much they think that what I've been doing is great, admirable, amazing, you know, and, I left it at that. I said, no problem. I'm like, no problem. I just wanted to make sure. And then I took that opportunity to educate this person a little bit and say, listen, I know it's annoying sometimes, but you don't understand what it's done for me. You don't understand what it's done for my family. You don't understand what I've seen it do for other people. I've watched wives that have lost their husbands. Like, you know, like the story we saw at Summit, lose their husbands lose everything and because of this business they were able to change their life their life i've seen people turn around their their health in such like you know i think of my coach benjo you don't understand this guy was like 20 something on blood pressure medication like and i've seen that and i've seen people like you know be on welfare food stamps and find a way like and I just let it all out on this person. I'm like, I know if you understood like that it's way more than just my, my sweaty selfies and all that. Like this is just so amazing and I'm so glad I found it. You would see that why I love this so much. And you know what? I don't even know if this person added me back or followed me back. I don't even know. But I know that I left that phone call with one more person just understanding me a little bit better. Understanding what I do. 
And it wasn't even for that person I did it for. It was for myself. It was for myself. Because I don't want my mind power. I don't want that fog. I don't wanna, I could have walked away and said, screw this person. The next time I run into them, probably been a little pissed off with them. A little, you know, cause I wear my emotions on my sleeve. So I would've been like, I know what you did. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Why aren't you happy for me, right? I could have done that. But I chose otherwise, guys, and I felt amazing afterwards. I really felt amazing afterwards. So that's what I want to leave you guys with. And I'm going to use the words of Gary Vaynerchuk when he says, if you have the audacity to want this business to be everything for you, if you have the audacity to want it to provide for your family, if you have the audacity to want to live this life of freedom, of you calling the shots, of you being your own boss, of you being the mom you wanna be, the dad you wanna be, the sister, the daughter, all the things that you want, then, then you have to make some sacrifices, right? You gotta, you gotta tweak it up a little bit. You gotta be the bigger person. You gotta go pro. You gotta hashtag be like Kara. You gotta be that person. Because I don't know about you, but as, ever since I've been a Beachbody coach, it has made me 10 times more better person than I ever was. I'm the I strike up conversations in the grocery line. I am, I, I, I know my kids' teachers on a personal level that I never got to do. I never had the time. I never had the mind to do those things before. But because this business has taught me the importance of relationships, the importance of getting out there and making a difference. And I truly go to bed every night knowing I make a difference in people's lives. It's coming out of me. It's made me a better person. And so that's the message I want to leave with you guys today. If you have the audacity, then be that person. All right, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to admit I was nervous to do this, but whenever you have passion, um, and this and, and, and belief, it comes out of your pores, guys. If you want that for yourself, if you want this business for yourself, dig in. All right. Thank you for having coffee with me. Cheers. Love you guys. Talk to you later.